Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today we're going to have some more fun. Today I've got some time and money saving hacks for you, this time on finishing. And if you haven't already subscribed yet, I invite you to do that. Uh, but let's get started with the first finishing hack. Now any of you who have been following me for any length of time will know that I'm not a fan of painting wood. But you know what, sometimes you have to do that. And the paint around my place uh, doesn't get stirred very often because it doesn't get used very often. But look what I figured out. If you go to the thrift store, they usually have buckets of these things. You can just go and pick out whatever one you want. Hook it up to your electric drill and start off slow, but it'll mix paint like crazy. Have a look at this. And look, if you have the right base and the right height, you might even have to lift it up. You can just let it sit there and it'll drain all by itself. But for washing off, this is just a latex paint. You can just take this and run it under a tap and it's all clean. And there you go, it's already clean. And you know what? You can buy these things for next to nothing at the thrift store. You can even buy a bunch of them and give them out as birthday gifts. And while we're still on the topic of painting, let's have a look at brushes for a second. Sometimes you have a job that might last a couple days, or maybe you haven't got around to cleaning, you've got something else you need to do, um, but you want to store your brush so that it doesn't get ruined. And, you know, this is one of the ways you can do it. These are just uh, disposable wipes, and they have this dispenser top like this, so you can put the handle of the brush through there, put your fluid in there, your turpentine or your cleaner in there, uh, and just let that sit and soak for a while. And sometimes you need to do that, especially for brush has gotten hard but check this out you know when you're not using this when you've cleaned the brush and taken it out you can put that lid back on there and with that now you can seal that fluid in there and you can keep reusing that you'll be surprised how much extra life you can get out of fluid uh, when you seal it like that I like to use glass jars when I can and uh, this brush has uh, seen better days so I would probably use a pretty powerful cleaner on that but what you can do I just use these disposable gloves in the workshop and I don't use them a lot but from time to time they come in handy. You just slip one of the fingers down over the handle of the brush and now you can see a lot and that will stay in there for quite a few days before this glove will disintegrate so you do want to get to it sooner than later um, but it's a great way of temporarily keeping your fluid, the fumes from evaporating uh, and keeping the fluid in your jar. This next tip is from one of my subscribers, Gary Smith. Thank you, Gary, this is a great tip. Now, before I start on this, I buy my sandpaper in boxes of whatever this is, a thousand or something. Um, so, you know, I'm always in here lifting out one or two or three or half a dozen because I do all my sanding in a breezeway outside. Um, but look at, here's Gary's idea, is making little stands like this that you can put all of your sandpaper on and I even went the next step and actually labeled them so I know quickly what they are. Now usually when I'm sanding you know I've got a handful of you know two or three of these and two or three of the others uh, I got to look on the back of them to see what they are and you know those numbers are not always easy to read because they're stamped they got holes in them uh, but this is a great way thanks Gary um, of keeping them all organized and he has a little box I think I might do that too um, put them in, in a little box like that when I go to do my sanding I can just grab the box I already know that I've got all the sandpaper in there I don't have to be going through and shuffling to see what I've got it's all right there and handy and all that is is some scrap plywood uh, and I've just put some dowels in there and look at it just holds the sandpaper great if I can get it in there <laughs> there it is um, and it, it doesn't fly around it doesn't fall off um, just a great way of storing sandpaper Thanks, Gary. That's a great tip, and as you can see, I'm already using it. Maybe I'll send you one of those paint stirrers as a thank you. The last thing that we do before we put a finish on is to make sure we get all the dust off. And there's a variety of ways of doing that. 
one of the ways we do that is with something called a tack cloth. And there's a variety of ways of doing it. Sometimes it's just a dry cloth some people use. Uh, some people like to use like a rubbing alcohol or something like that so it doesn't raise the grain. Um, lots of things. This is a little tip somebody gave me many years ago and all it is is the, the Swiffer sweeper, um, the thing for the floors and you just use the cloths from that. I think this box is like three or four years old and it's still half still only used uh, less than half of the little cloths from these last forever when they get a bit dusty you can take them outside and just kind of shake them in the breeze uh, and they clean right up and they just keep right on working but they're dry they don't leave a residue I was afraid of that at first uh, I haven't seen any difference they just do a great job quick and easy and a big time saver here's a little tip that'll help you out when you're installing hinges I always find when I'm installing hinges, as soon as I find the place for them to sit, they always seem to fall off on me because they're sometimes a little bit heavier on the lower side. But look, here's a way to solve that. All you need to do is go and get yourself some double-sided tape. Anything will work. This just happens to be Scotch brand. I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of it here if that doesn't fall off one more time. And it's clear, it doesn't affect anything, you can still drill through it, and look at that, put that on the back like that, position it, now you might even have it recessed, but look at, that doesn't go anywhere, that's on there solid, and if you do, even if you had a recess in there, you could still do that, now you can drill it, you can put holes in there, put screws in there, and it's not going to move around on you. Well, that concludes my video for today. Uh, and don't forget, if you've got a tip or a trick that you'd like to share with us, uh, go to Woodwork Web, uh, click on Contact Us, and let me know what that is. If I haven't already used it, we'll put it in one of the upcoming videos, and we'll even give you credit for it. I'm Colin Gannett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.